What is up everybody, Estas here, and in this video we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, and kind of some other stocks and ETFs that I'm watching and that I'm keeping my eyes on here in the month of December in 2019. And as you guys read in the title, we're also going to be talking about you guys, natural gas, and degas in this video, because you guys in specific guys in natural gas they saw an absolute explosion today so I kind of want to talk about that very very big move in you guys in natural gas and kind of what sent this market down pretty heavily today because if you guys were paying attention to these markets you saw we gapped down quite aggressively down about 40 points on the S&P 500 at the lowest point so if you guys enjoyed this video before we get into all that good stuff Simply go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and join our Strive Smart Discord group chat, as well as our Strive Smart Facebook group. Both of those are linked down below. So let's talk about the S&P 500 here and kind of what happened in these markets today. So you guys can see the past two days in the markets have been absolutely terrible. Actually, the past three days, right? On Friday, that short little day we had, we sold off. Monday, we sold off. We saw a cliff dive in the morning and we kind of consolidated um, from there and Tuesday we saw another cliff dive and we've since been consolidating and kind of running up from there which is good I guess you can say for the bulls but still overall we're downtrending as we're trending below the overall 180 SMA here on um, the five day five minute chart so the S&P here guys you can see it's just been dumping and it's really in a downtrend at this point in time. And if we zoom out a bit to the 20 day, one hour, we broke the 50 SMA and that 180 SMA. And if we zoom out to the four hour chart, you guys can see we also broke the 50 SMA there. So we've seen a bunch of uh, support level breaks here on the S&P, which are kind of alarming, especially for the bulls out there. These are levels that if you're a bull, you want these levels to hold. But obviously, we've expected this, right? I've been talking about this on the channel that these markets are very, very hot and they need to cool off at some point. And this is that point in time that they're cooling off thanks to uncertainty involving the China and the U.S. trade deal. As Trump was quoted today saying, in some ways, I like the idea of waiting until after the election for the China deal, but they want to make a deal now and we will see whether or not the deal is going to be right, Trump told reporters earlier on Tuesday. When asked if he had a deal deadline, he added, I have no deadline. No. In some ways, I think it is better to wait until after the election if you want to know the truth. And by the truth, I have no idea what that means. I have no idea what that could entail. But from that, we can see that Trump, you know, he really wants to push this trade deal as far back as he can. He wants to wait until after the election, which at this point in time, guys, if that happens, that's a whole nother 9, 12 months, really another 11 months at this point, more of uncertainty, which could really rattle the markets, in my opinion, especially if new uh, issues arise from now until the next election involving the trade war um, between the U.S. and China. So that's kind of interesting. That in general is what sent these markets down today. And if we go to the SPY, you can see we broke the 50 SMA as well. And this is just basically an ETF that tracks the S&P 500, but we're holding that 180 SMA, which is this gold line here on the four hour chart, which I guess you can say is a pretty good sign. So a lot of bad things in terms of the charts here, but the one good thing is that hold on the four hour chart here for SPY, but still guys, it's downtrending here. Moving averages are acting as resistances. So until we see a huge pop above 311, 312, I'm honestly not convinced that this is going to be reversing quite yet. And if we look at the Dow Jones here, guys, this one got crushed even worse than the S&P, down almost 1% right now, down 0.96% with about 30 minutes left in the market today, down 267 
points. And just like the S&P, the past couple of days have been bad. On Friday, we had that short day. We fell. Monday, we fell. And today, we saw a drastic gap down. We held 27.3. And from that point in time, we've been climbing up, which is a good sign for the bulls. But again, we're still downtrending on uh, a lot of these time frames, the five-day, five-minute time frame being one of them, right? And if we zoom out a bit to the hourly chart, you guys can see we're still trending below that EMA as well. And if we go to that four-hour chart, we can see a bigger picture of this being a correction, just like the S&P guys, right? We sold off aggressively from 28K to where we are now, but the fact that we're holding that old all-time high at 27.3 as a support, that old resistance as a support, that is a pretty, pretty good sign here, in my opinion, for the Dow Jones. But I'm not quite convinced that we're going to rally back up from here quite yet. I think, like I've mentioned, we could see a little bit of rockiness over these next couple of days still in these markets. So going to the NASDAQ, down about 0.8% right now, down $65. And we can see we're holding that 180 SMA on the four-hour chart despite the terrible, terrible performance that we've seen today. And if we go to that hourly chart, you can see we're still downtrending, right? The past couple of days have been pretty poor. We saw the big drop, consolidation a little bit. This gave us hope that this could be a higher low, but ultimately we saw the next big drop which came today, completely broke that uptrend that we do see here, and we're still trending, I guess you can say, below, but we're kind of breaking out of that EMA, um, but still, we're at a lower high at this point, so we can't say quite yet that this thing is breaking out to the upside, but some levels I'm watching are, of course, that EMA, this 50 uh, SMA, and that 180 SMA. So overall, guys, that's pretty much it for the market update. All you need to know is the market's drop dropped, right? On more uncertainty surrounding the trade war between US and China. And this stuff has been happening for months on top of months at this point, right? Some periods of time we're getting optimism, which is pushing up these markets. And then other periods of time, we have uncertainty, we have some pessimism, we have some um, issues surrounding this trade war and the markets drop. And that is actually what moment we're in at this moment in time, at least for the short term here, guys. So let me know down below. What are your thoughts on that? Let me know in the comment section. Now let's talk about what I did today. So the first thing I did was I actually ended up getting out of my Home Depot position here, ticker symbol HD. And this is mostly because as you guys can guess, this thing dumped today, down about 1.5% right now, and at its lowest point, I think it was at 212 or something. Um, yup, 212 bucks here. And really, the main thing here, guys, is I'm not looking to fight the trend, right? This massive gap down that we saw today, maybe not massive, I might be blowing that out of proportion a little bit, but this gap down that we saw today actually broke a critical level of support that I've been watching um, being this trend line that I have right here. We held it in terms of a higher low after the earnings report and we started to rally, which is why I got in, but the fact that we failed to break out of that EMA, we're breaking it to the downside, and we may even break this 180 SMA, that's clearly a trend that is moving down and not up. And one of my main swing trading rules is not to fight the trend. So I'm not going to be a hypocrite um, in terms of my own rules. So I ended up getting out of the position. So I took a little loss there on Home Depot, which is not a big deal because I enter my swing trades with about a 10, 15 to 20% initial position for this very reason. Because if the stock goes down, if it doesn't go my way initially, I'm not losing money on the entire position, right? Let's say I put 10,000 bucks in at first. That's my goal position, right? Hypothetically here. If I lost 2%, whatever, 
driver, that's going to be a 200 buck loss. But let's say I put in a thousand bucks, I lost two percent. That's going to be 20 bucks. So you guys can see kind of my methodology um, behind scaling in and why I'm not too worried about um, losing a little bit of money here on Home Depot. At the end of the day, it's not a big deal because on the flip side, I was able to trade you guys today, guys. And we kind of talked about this in yesterday's video. And honestly, over the past couple of videos that you guys in natural gas had a lot of potential in the short term to see a bit of a breather, right? Because they've gotten crushed. Natural gas saw a day down 20%. You know, it's just been extremely oversold. And with stocks, ETFs, futures, whatever it may be, when you see something battered down so heavily day after day after day after day, there's going to be a point where we see a rebound. And at this point in time, guys, I nailed the rebound pretty, pretty nicely. Um, and really anybody that traded it today nailed that rebound because we got quite the rebound. So let me show you all on you guys here what happened. You can see yesterday we closed at about 936 and we literally gapped up $2, guys, $2 up to the peak at about 1134, which is two cents lower than about two bucks. So I guess you can say we gapped up $1.98, which is insane. That's a move of around 21% at the peak here. And if you guys remember in yesterday's video, I was talking about this level potentially being a bottom. And if we were breaking out and if we were to break out of these moving averages heading into tomorrow's session, which was today's session, that would be a sign that we may be seeing a push in the short term here to the upside, right? So that's kind of what initially uh, sparked my interest in trading you guys is the fact that we were gapping up this morning. We gapped up quite aggressively. We broke those moving averages to the upside, like I mentioned yesterday, and we rided the 50 SMA pretty much all pre-market hours today, from 4 a.m. all the way up to 9.30 a.m. when the market opened here on the East Coast, we were riding that 50 SMA, and I pretty much got in, guys, once this market opened, and I had a tight stop loss on it. I'll be honest, a super tight stop loss. I believe it was like um, a 1% or or something like that, maybe even less, 0.75%, right around there with the stop loss. And I got lucky because it did not get triggered at all here. And then all of a sudden, we saw that rocket push. And obviously, guys, when I was in natural gas this morning, or rather you guys this morning, I was not expecting this, right? I was not expecting this massive push. So kind of once we saw the initial launch up here, I sold a little bit of my position. I'll be completely honest with you guys, right? I got in, I think it was like 1015 or 1019 or something like that. And I sold out at about 1044 for around 2%, I believe half of my position. And thankfully, I let the other half ride, guys, because as you can see, we ran up a lot more from there. And I mean a lot more. From where I exited at about 1045, you know, upwards of about 1130, like I mentioned, we saw another 8% move to the upside. So I didn't get that whole 8%. I believe I ended up selling completely out at like 1075 because think about it, guys. At this point, this thing is so overbought. I'm up a, a, a pretty good amount on my position already. So I figured get out profit. That's it for the day. And uh, I threw in the towel and that's pretty much it. Ended up getting out of you guys there. Again, half of my position kind of in that first spike and the other half in the next spike. And that's kind of going to transition us to the breakdown of you guys natural gas. We'll talk about some weather here and kind of what my plans are going forward and whether or not I see more upside here in you guys. So let's break it down here starting off with the January futures contracts and you can see here they're currently up almost 5% up almost 12 cents on the day, which is pretty incredible, right? And if we zoom in a bit to some of these smaller time frames, you notice how we broke the 50 SMA resistance, which is this green line. That's a pretty good sign, but we're struggling right now under this 180 SMA, which is this gold line, as well as under the general $2.50 level of resistance, right? That's kind of where we're struggling right now, but in my opinion, this 
this makes sense because we saw such a big upside push today that we're pulling down a bit at a resistance point. It kind of makes sense, right? And another thing that I want to point out here is although we're getting rejected there, which is not the best for the bulls at this point, we're holding that EMA, which is actually a good thing for the bulls here because this is a higher low, right? This is a higher low. If we end up rallying from here, maybe tomorrow or later today, that could be a sign that the uptrend's continuing and we're going to retest 250 and that 180 SMA where if we break that, that is where I'm going to see a lot more upside for natural gas and UGAS. That's kind of one of the main barriers in the way of a UGAS huge rally here in my opinion. Well, the first, one of the first barriers at that, right? I think if we break that, that's going to be a huge bullish move on natural gas and how is that going to equate over to you guys you guys can see we're pulling down just like natural gas here and just like natural gas we're holding that EMA which is this light blue line at a higher low heading into the close here with about 17 minutes left so that's a pretty good sign and if natural gas continues the rally guys I could really see you guys potentially going to $12 $12.50 because we can see here last time it broke the 50 SMA kind of in the last uh, couple of days here I guess you can say within the last 10 14 days we ran up to that 180 SMA after that 50 SMA break right and this was a point in time where natural gas and you gas were extremely oversold kind of like they are right now and we saw a nice recovery from there so I think it's possible that from here 1050 we could see another 10 15 20% upside in the short term on you guys before either downtrending or breaking out for good here and seeing a solid solid rally like we saw in these last couple of months back in the beginning of uh, September I believe was the first rally then we saw another rally a couple of weeks ago I think again if we break like that, we start to hit this 180 SMA or start to go towards it. That's a good sign that we may see a bigger rally in store. But as of now, I'm being patient because... Again, we're still trending below that 50 SMA and that needs to be broken first before we can really go in and say from a technical basis, yes, you guys, natural gas, they are rallying to the upside. So let's talk about some weather here that I'm seeing on natgasweather.com. So for December 3rd through the 9th, a chilly start across much of the U.S. today, but with the western, central, and southern U.S. warming mid next week with highs of 40s to 70s. 70s, warmest over Texas and the South. A weather system will exit the Northeast, but with a reinforcing cool shot to follow Wednesday to Thursday for locally strong demand. And I can actually attest to that, guys. I'm in the East Coast right now. I'm in New Jersey, and it is pretty, pretty cold here. Warm high pressure will strengthen across the Southern and Eastern U.S. late this weekend into early next week with warmer than normal conditions. Overall, moderate national demand through Saturday, then light Sunday through Tuesday. So if we're talking about these natural gas reports coming, I believe over the next one to two weeks, that is kind of where we're going to see the demand from this week and uh, last week in terms of natural gas, right? So we'll see how the weather we're seeing today is going to affect, you know, these reports. And ultimately that's what's going to push you gas and degas and obviously natural gas here in the short term. So so Thursday, guys, Thursday, 1030 a.m. Eastern Standard, that's when the natural gas storage report is going to come out for this previous trading week. Again, it's one week behind. That's something very, very important. So when that comes out, we're going to see how much billion cubic feet of natural gas was either stored, which I doubt we'll see a uh, injection here, or we'll see a withdrawal of natural gas and we'll 
see how big of a withdrawal that is, and that will really attest to whether or not it's a bullish report or it's a more bearish report. And again, that's what's going to push up natural gas or push it down, which will then fluctuate U gas and D gas. So let's talk about very quickly some other stocks and ETFs that I have here that all pretty much got crushed other than one or two on this list here. So NVIDIA guys, NVDA, this is one that we saw dip 220 down to about 202 today and now we're seeing the recovery to about 207. I think this is worth watching for a potential dip buy if these markets recover as there is about a 6-7% profit potential in store for NVIDIA and, and every dip it seems like over over the past couple of months on NVIDIA here has proven to be a solid buy. So we're holding that four hour SMA, 180 SMA here. Um, this is definitely worth watching, ticker symbol NVDA. The next one is one that's actually doing well in a day where the markets are getting squashed. That is Shopify, ticker symbol SHOP. This one's up $20 today, up 5.89%, almost 6 percent and with this move today guys we broke the critical 345 dollar level of resistance and now we're in the next channel that is from 345 up to around 370 bucks so this is very interesting in my opinion this is a tradable channel if we end up pulling down tomorrow maybe i could get an entry point on shopify and honestly i wouldn't even be uh, uh surprised if we continued rallying up and in that case Case, I might just buy into the momentum tomorrow on Shopify, but we'll see how it ends up playing out. SQ is another one here that we actually sold off in. We were down about, um, or rather not down today, we're actually up today at this point in time, but we were down um, yesterday, right? You guys can see the big dump came yesterday. Today we actually dumped again to about 64, but ultimately held um, 66, went above 66 and held it. And due to that, that, or rather because of that I'm looking to trade this one from 66 up to around 70 bucks that's the channel that I'm seeing right now on square I'm liking it about six percent profit potential from where we are right now up to that level that is definitely worth watching right now as a potential swing another one that's looking similar to square is Roku we got crushed 163 down to about 135 we held that 180 SMA now we're breaking back up, looking to test 140 to about 145. I think if we break this EMA here, this could be a huge bull move that can get us back up into the 150s, maybe back up to the 160s. So I'm looking to capitalize on this one with about 12 to 13% margin of profit in store. Another one is MO, guys, Ultria. Um, this is one that I own in my long-term accounts. This is one that's been doing quite well, honestly, over these past couple of weeks and we're getting to a point where we're about to test 50 bucks we're already testing it and I think if we could break that there is a potential we gap up to 52.90 to about 53 bucks giving Altria a nice four to five percent profit potential and of course they pay a very juicy dividend if you were looking to swing trade this and held it for a couple months yes you'd have received maybe one two dividend payments and some nice price appreciation if if we get from 50 to 53 and above. So the next one is going to be Neo. This is the last one of the bunch today, guys. We're looking to potentially break 240 today. Probably not, but tomorrow we might test it to run up to 270. And that's the next channel that I'm looking to trade on Neo. And from 240 up to 270, that's about a 10% potential on Neo. And I really, really like it for the, the potential breakout that it has. Because because they've had a lot of positive momentum ever since they agreed with Intel and Mobileye to start this partnership that I think will benefit them in the long term. So Neo looking really good and that's pretty much it guys. If you enjoyed it, let me know down below in the comment section what are your thoughts of this video, some stocks that you are watching, ETFs, ETNs, whatever it may be, and simply hit that like button if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you want to see further content for me. And if you want to be further connected with the Strive Smart community, the Discord links down below.
below. The Facebook link's down below. Twitter's down below. All of the links are down below, so check that out. I appreciate all of you watching. As always, peace out.